Yeah, coming up, Sandra Bullock's uh, ex-husband Jesse James is going to break his silence and we're going to show you his very first television interview that shortly. But I tell you, there, there is no denying uh, that cycling on the road can be dangerous. Recently, a 65-year-old Sydney cyclist was hit by a car and, can you believe, left for dead. Then, a 46-year-old Melbourne cyclist was chased and assaulted by a motorist. And the latest attack, a 71-year-old Sydney woman, has died after a cyclist sped past her, then got off his bike, walked up to her and pushed her to the ground. A witness said the cyclist, who was on a mountain bike, said the woman was in his way. This morning, to look at this issue, uh, cyclist Nathan Besh joins us, along with motoring expert Ian Luff. Gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I tell you, when there are no real cycle paths and no room which for cycles which then restrict traffic, why should cyclists be on the road? Nathan? Um, it's a valid form of transport. I can get from my place to the city a lot quicker than I can on a bus, on a train or in a car. So to say that we're holding up the drivers really isn't true if we can get there quicker than they can. Uh, it's also a lot of risk mitigation, choose the back roads where there is less traffic and where there are slower moving vehicles. What's your view, Ian? Well, look, I think there's a, a place for bikes and cars on our roads. But, but when they're not purpose built and we've got cities where people want to ride cycles and they take up a lane which interferes with traffic, isn't it right? Why don't we just put cyclists out where there's purpose-built suburbs and roads? Well, I suppose in, in the real world that would be great, but unfortunately we live in a, in a mm. different world and in the cities that um, there are push bikes and the law says that they can share the road. So, so what is the law? Well, the law basically says that a push bike rider can share the roads and they can take up a complete lane uh, for safety reasons because if they're right at the side, uh, there can be risks involved and, as we've seen, people can get knocked off their bikes. Nathan, why don't cyclists have ID numbers, number plates and pay tax like motorists? Uh, we do pay taxes. The roads are funded by the general tax system. Uh, registration comprises such a minuscule amount of actually building the roads. Um, South Australian Government did a study and they declared it wasn't feasible what to introduce What about IDs? It. Uh, I think currently there's a voluntary ID system with couriers. But it's voluntary. That's correct. Well, we know there are. Um, <clears throat> there are definitely, sadly, cases where there have been aggressive um, car drivers, and I've just listed a couple there, but also there are aggressive cyclists, which, you know, really fuels this debate. What do we do about identifying cyclists who scratch cars, are abusive, and there's no recourse? Well, tragically, with no ID on a bike, uh, people haven't got much recourse, as you alluded to. So I really believe that bikes should have some form of identification on there. Would you go with that, Nathan? Uh, no. As I said, the cost so of doing you, it to you society... you don't believe any bike should have an ID? Uh, no, not a bike. Perhaps a rider would be the only feasible way to do it. To put it on a bike, having a metal plate, if you have an accident, it's just going to shred you to pieces. It's not feasible. Um, the, the cost benefit to society isn't there to warrant Why putting the system. Why shouldn't you be identified like a car driver? I have no issues being identified. As I said, I would happily wear a number. I've got no problems with that. But if somebody's going to commit a crime, how many times have we seen on the news where police are looking for a blue Commodore with no New South Wales plates? Just well, because you're having the plate there doesn't guarantee you'll be able to find the person, as we saw with the 65-year-old. Do you agree hit. something has to be done to identify bikes or riders? Uh, not necessarily, no. Why? The risk to society from a cyclist is so minuscule compared to a car. You've got a ton but of steel. they still, whatever it is, you can still do damage. As, as a pedestrian, which we label pedestrians as well, they can, as a cyclist, you're the same weight as a pedestrian, roughly the same speed a lot of the times. Should we label pedestrians because they could run into someone? It's not if feasible. We're, if we're looking this morning, front page of the Daily Telegraph, no money for jams. And it says, <coughs> um, secret reports say we are now in New South Wales stuck for the next 20 years... 20 years with roads just getting worse and worse and worse, which cyclists will go, whoopee, we're going to ride out there on our cycles. But the trouble is more cyclists get on the road, clog up the even difficult traffic. And this is suggesting mm. that Christina Keneally has committed $158 million to bike paths which will withdraw traffic lanes. Is that... Am I reading it correctly, Ian? Well, I, political talk... I know where she's coming from, but I can't see it being a reality because we've only got so much space out there. But that's right, they will take... Well, as Clover Moore has done, she that's... has taken space uh, off areas of Sydney without any consulta consultation of people. Uh, it's been deemed absolutely irresponsible. Your view, Nathan? Um, as I said, a, a cyclists save over $200 million a year annually uh, from... I think it was about $150 million from the health mm. budget. 
Um, so for the government to spend $150 million, if they're going to get much more than that back, mm. it's a wise choice. It's, it's OK to have a user pay system, mm. but when the government can get a lot more benefits by spending a bit of money here and there, why shouldn't mm. they? What's, do you know an answer, Ian? Look, I think the uh, designated cycleway is a very good. If you look at the M7 motorway, that's got a designated... But that's on a brand-new freeway, purpose-built. Correct. Built. That's right. And they Should they the be planning. on inner Melbourne City, Brisbane roads that are already built for a horse cart? Well, I think it's very difficult because it's going to clog up the traffic. Not everyone wants to ride a push bike, particularly in inclement weather. If you're in Melbourne, we know what Melbourne weather's like. Four seasons in one, um, it's very unrealistic. And, uh, and it's a little bit of a fad. There's a lot of bikes out there, I know. But uh, people get on their bike, they get all excited about the exercise, and in many cases, it lasts for a short period of time. Yeah, it's a tough answer. It's also a dangerous one. But, gentlemen, Nathan, Ian, thank you very thank much you. for your time thank this you. morning. OK, yeah, if you've got any information regarding those uh, incidents, by the way, either the hit and run in Northbridge in Sydney or the assault in Melbourne, uh, there is the Crime Stoppers number. I'll give you a moment to um, jot it down. OK, drivers, OK, cyclists, this is your chance to give us your input. Are you worried about the road system? Or if you're a cyclist, are you worried about the drivers? Give us your view this morning. Uh, the fear in road and uh, safety, kerryanne at 9.com.au. We'll really get to your emails this morning. OK, well, this was a guy who 